The African continent is home to some of the most diverse, unusual, and majestic wildlife in the world. Herds of antelope, giraffe, and zebra browse her grasslands. The awesome white rhino and African elephant draw visitors from around the world to game preserves in record numbers. But the photographs they bring home of these now protected species tell only part of the story. A lot of the poaching that occurs would simply not have taken place if the market wasn't there. I mean, a man who, who takes a rhino horn, if he can earn enough money to keep himself and his family for a year or two, um, he's going to take the risk. Nick Carter is a long way from home, not the home of his birth in Chester, England, and not the London headquarters of the Environmental Investigation Agency, which he co-founded in 1984. Today, Nick Carter is somewhere in Zambia, an African nation about the size of Texas. We are on this north bank of the Zambezi River here. Down there behind me is Mozambique, and straight across the river is Zimbabwe. For 25 years, Nick Carter, author, researcher, and investigator, has been a tireless crusader for the rights and protection of wildlife the world over. In many parts of Africa, they're doing what their forefathers always did, and that is just hunt, and hunt for the village and to get meat for the village. In 1992, Carter turned his attention to the illegal trading of ivory and rhino horn in the countries of southern Africa. This illegal trade, whether it's his skins, whether it's his live or dead specimens of mammals and birds and so on and so forth, is what keeps the poaching going? It's the, it's the market for the produce. Interpol estimates worldwide revenues from illegal trafficking in wildlife at five billion U.S. dollars a year. That amount is second only to the international narcotics trade. All they can see is money. They have no other value. They're there for money. And wildlife is just a commodity. And if it's rare, it is very profitable. That's the bottom line. Nick Carter set out to help find a solution that transcended artificial boundaries. The Lusaka Agreement is an agreement on cooperative enforcement operations against illegal trade in wild fauna and flora. Six nations agreed to establish a task force with the power to investigate and prosecute poachers, regardless of national borders. Uh, the Lusaka Agreement uh, seeks for the uh, parties to the agreement to, to cooperate in the field of international control of uh, illegal uh, activities. In September 1994, the Lusaka Agreement was signed establishing the world's first multinational enforcement body to fight wildlife crime. As he enters his eighth decade, Lionel Anthony Nick Carter shows no sign of slowing down. You know, you pick wisdom from the odd. He's still vital. He still gives us hope that our animals shall survive. After a lifetime of such accomplishments, what drives Nick Carter to press on? If you see a problem, and you feel that something should be done about it. And you look around and you see that no one else is doing anything, you're elected. For outstanding environmental achievement in Africa, a 1997 Goldman Environmental Prize is awarded to Nick Carter of Lusaka, Zambia.